A couple of years ago, I put up a favorites list, or a guide if you want, of IPCs that in my opinion are worth buying. And while those recommendations mostly still hold true two years later, I want to revisit that list today and update it with newer items that I had the chance to test and try out since then. So without further ado, let's get this video on the road. Hi, I'm Ukanan and welcome to Video Observatory. Let's kick off with short focal length eyepieces for high power observations. This would be the eyepieces you typically use to observe the planets of our solar system. Important criteria here are contrast and sharpness, more so than the width of the field of view or its flatness. This is because planets will appear small in the field of view no matter what you do. And having a very wide field of view is, in my opinion, less important than image quality. Alright, so for the entry level category, I'm keeping the 6mm 66 degree gold ring eyepiece as the top choice. It's such a good value. A version of this eyepiece is being sold by many manufacturers, such as Skywatcher, TS Optics, Sviboni, Omegon, and so on. And at a price point of around 60 bucks, it is able to offer decent optical performance with no major drawbacks. Sure, the eye relief is on the shorter side, and if you don't position your eye right on the optical axis, the view may suffer from blackouts. Otherwise, the views through are very bright with good contrast and sharp as well, especially at the center of the field of view, making it a great choice for anyone looking to upgrade the cheaper eyepieces usually supplied with a telescope. As a mid-tier choice, I'm keeping the 82 degree series from Explore Scientific as the top option in this category. The 4.7, 6.7 and 8.8 .8 version are all very good eyepieces worthy of any collection. While the field of view isn't that flat and the eye relief is rather short, the quality of the image is very good, coming really close to that of the more expensive premium eyepieces. The optics are well corrected, capable of bright, contrast-rich and sharp views right up to the edge of the field of view. Impressive for this price segment is the level of build quality as well. These are all very well put together. Sharing the same category is the Hyperion series from Bader Planetarium. With these eyepieces, you trade some of the width of the field of view for a flatter view and a more generous eye relief of 20 mm. Both the 5 and the 8 mm versions are great for planetary observations, thanks to good contrast and brightness levels. Because of the excellent coating applied to the lenses, there aren't any internal reflections whatsoever. Not only this, but featuring Bader's renowned modular system, the Hyperion is compatible with a wide variety of Bader accessories. This will allow you to attach the eyepieces to cameras, bino viewers and other devices without a problem. Moving over to the premium category, we still have the very well regarded Teleview Delight, which I consider to be one of the best eyepieces for planetary observations on the market right now. If you are willing to pay its high price tag, you will get excellent optics capable of delivering perfectly sharp and bright views with lots of contrast, thanks to the generous eye relief of 20 mm and a large top lens, the views through the Delight are forgiving and very comfortable as well. Coming in just behind the Delight is the Morpheus lineup from Bader Planetarium. With a flat and wide apparent field of view, the very well corrected optical elements inside these eyepieces are capable of delivering an immersive viewing experience. It really feels like you are walking among the stars costing considerably less than the Delight and offering like 95% of its optical performance, the Morpheus is an excellent choice for anyone looking for an endgame eyepiece. 
All right, now let's move over to eyepieces with a medium focal length. This would be eyepieces suited for, well, medium power observations of the moon, planets and smaller DSOs where you will need a little bit more magnification. As a very capable entry level option, I am keeping the 15mm Swan from Omegon on the list. For an eyepiece that costs less than a hundred bucks, this one manages to offer a solid optical performance with no major drawbacks. The views are clean, crisp and well corrected. The build quality is great as well. This makes this eyepiece a very good choice for anyone looking to upgrade the default eyepieces telescopes usually come with. If we take a look at the next category, medium tier eyepieces, there are three options that in my opinion are worth considering, all with slightly different strengths and weaknesses and a price tag between 120 and 180 US dollars. The already mentioned 82 degree series from Explore Scientific is a great choice, especially the 14 mm version. The views it is able to deliver are sharp, bright and with good contrast. As mentioned before, the eye relief is on the shorter side and the field of view isn't that flat, but otherwise there aren't any significant shortcomings. If a long eye relief is important to you, then take a look at the Hyperion series from Bader Planetarium. The 13 and the 17 mm versions are excellent for medium power observations, both being capable of delivering sharp and contrast rich views with no significant optical aberrations. The only trade-offs being a narrower field of view compared to the Explore Scientific, but in return you get a significant increase in eye relief, which could translate in a more comfortable viewing experience, especially if you wear glasses. If you value a flat field of view above anything else, then take a look at the 15mm ultra flat field from APM. The apparent field of view is narrower still when compared to the Hyperion, but you gain an arguably more immersive viewing experience thanks to the flatter field of view. Image quality wise, you get similar great optical performance like with the other two eyepieces. So really, each one of these three represents a solid mid-tier option compatible with almost every telescope out there, even fast ones. If we move over to the premium category, we find on one hand the Teleview Delos and on the other hand the Morpheus lineup from Bader Planetarium. The Delos is much more expensive, but if you are looking for a no compromise ultra wide angle eyepiece, you would be hard pressed to find a better one below 600 bucks. The views it is able to deliver are excellent with great brightness, contrast rich and sharp right up to the edge of the field of view. The very large top lens and the generous eye relief allows for a very comfortable viewing experience as well. If however you are on a budget but still want premium quality, then take a closer look at the 14 and 17.5 mm Morpheus. With a wider field of view and a slightly longer eye relief, it offers an arguably more comfortable viewing experience. Because the optical performance is almost on the same level as the Delos, this eyepiece makes a very compelling purchasing argument. In part also because, like the Hyperion, it benefits from the broader ecosystem of accessories. All right, now let's move on to the next focal length category the one for low power observations. These are typically used for DSOs and roaming around the night sky. For this, you normally want the eyepiece to feature a wide and flat field of view that is also sharp right up to the edge. The ability to produce bright images with lots of contrast is also something to look out for. With this in mind, I would like to put the Swan and the Panorama 2 lineups from Omegon on the list of entry-level wide-angle eyepieces with a long focal length. The 32 and the 38mm Swan eyepieces are excellent budget options capable of offering bright, sharp and contrast-rich views of the night sky without breaking the bank, 
I have owned the 32 mm version for a few years now and I love how forgiving this eyepiece is when observing. I have yet to experience any blackouts, kidney beaning or other optical aberrations when I'm out and looking at the night sky with it. This combined with the extra long eye relief and the large top lens make this eyepiece one of the easiest on the eyes and fun to use. If you are looking for a shorter focal length eyepiece with an even wider field of view, check out the 21mm Panorama 2. Its apparent field of view is a massive 100 degrees wide, allowing for a really immersive viewing experience even though it's not very flat. The image produced is well corrected and is bright enough to deliver a lot of fine details. Weighing over 700 grams, this eyepiece requires a well-balanced telescope and a solid mount, so keep this in mind if you are considering one for your setup. Alright, let's take a look at some medium tier eyepieces next. This category is full of excellent choices that manages to offer a great optical performance while still being affordable. Let's take the 24mm ultra flat field from APM for example. For less than 200 bucks, you get an eyepiece capable of offering a wide and very flat field of view, which results in an immersive viewing experience. The views through it are bright and with good contrast, and the fact that it features a one and a quarter inch form factor makes it compatible with basically every telescope on the market. Thanks to the very wide top lens and the excellent eye relief, the viewing experience is great as well. Another great eyepiece with similar characteristics is the 24mm Hyperion from Bader Planetarium. What you lose in eye relief when compared to the APM, you gain in size of the apparent field of view. The views produced by the Hyperion are well corrected as well, with good contrast and sharpness right up to the edge of the field of view. It also features arguably better lens coatings which reduces unwanted internal reflections and boosts contrast even further. Keeping the focal length unchanged, 24mm, but looking at a different manufacturer, we have the 68 degree series from Explore Scientific. This is another excellent attempt at maximizing the potential of the one and a quarter inch form factor. While the field of view of the Explore Scientific isn't as flat, especially when compared to the APM, it makes up for it in terms of sharpness, brightness and build quality. If you are a fan of Explore Scientific and are looking for an eyepiece with a longer focal length and a wider than 68 degree apparent field of view, then check out the 30mm 82 degree model. For a little over 300 bucks, you get a great 2 inch eyepiece capable of delivering bright, sharp and contrast rich views of the night sky. The only thing to keep in mind when shopping for one is its size and weight. At over 1.4 kilograms, this eyepiece is very heavy and a well balanced telescope on a solid mount is a must. If you are looking for a premium eyepiece, and your budget allows it, then check out the Pan Optic and Nagler series from Teleview. Inside the 24mm Pan Optic, for example, you will find the arguably best corrected optical system on the market. The views delivered by this eyepiece are as bright and sharp as they get, with lots of contrast. If the 24mm version is too short for you, then take a look at the 35mm option as well. It's a fantastic eyepiece for roaming the night sky. But if money is really no issue, then check out the 31mm Nagler Type 5. You would be hard pressed to find a better eyepiece on the market for deep sky observations. The Nagler is perfectly corrected and is able to deliver excellent contrast levels and sharpness up to the edge of the field of view. This being a large 2 inch eyepiece, its weight of nearly 1 kilogram is definitely something you need to take into consideration when shopping for one. Alright, let's move to the last category of eyepieces for this video, the variable focal length or zoom eyepieces. 
Even though these type of eyepieces come with a few drawbacks by design, such as a narrow field of view or short eye relief, they offer one feature that in some instances really makes up for everything else, the ability to change focal length on the fly without the need to change the whole eyepiece. Covering the short focal length spectrum, the 3 to 8 mm SV215 from Siboni is a great zoom eyepiece capable of delivering a sharp, bright and good contrast levels across all focal lengths. On top of this, the eyepiece is also par focal, meaning that none or only minimal focuser adjustments are necessary after changing the focal length. The only significant issue I have with this eyepiece is its very short eye relief. At only 10 mm, you need to get uncomfortably close to the lens to be able to see the whole field of view. Observing with eyeglasses on isn't really possible here. If you are however looking for a zoom eyepiece that covers the lower focal length spectrum, then take a look at the Hyperion Mark IV zoom eyepiece from Bader Planetarium. Even though this eyepiece has a rather high price tag when compared to other similar alternatives, in my opinion it's justified. As zoom eyepieces go, you won't be able to find one that manages to iron out the shortcomings of the variable focal length design like the Mark IV does. Where other eyepieces suffer from ridiculously narrow field of views at higher focal length settings or deliver less than desirable brightness levels, the Hyperion Zoom Mark IV produces decent views with respect to these aspects. In other words, it doesn't completely fall apart here. Other aspects like contrast and sharpness are great by any standard. The overall optical performance is in my opinion comparable to that of a quality mid-tier eyepiece with fixed focal length. And this is high praise for a zoom eyepiece. Alright, this was my 2023 update of my original eyepiece guide. And now I'm very curious to find out which eyepieces you have on your all-time favorites list. Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, that's been it for now. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and catch you guys in the next video.